Hi everyone. Welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa and I am The Crafty Author. Welcome to Sew Along with The Crafty Author. Today is Monday, April 6th, 2020. <laughs> How is everybody doing this evening? I am doing great. I took my dog for a walk today. It was probably about hmm, 72 degrees here in Denver. So we are just getting prepared for the storm that is to come next week. We're supposed to get a bunch of snow. So I'm enjoying the nice weather for now. Taking my puppy for a walk every day. She loves it. As a matter of fact, she she's so funny. I've never seen a dog quite like her, but... Um, you mentioned the word walk, and she's like, what? A walk? Let's go now. Let's go now. So um, so anyway, she's been getting walked a lot, which is really a good thing because I need to be walking too because my fat butt can't get any fatter from sitting. I'm just saying. So um, today I worked and got all my work done. Hi, Marsha. Welcome. And uh, so I got my work done, and then... We went for a walk, and then I came down here into the craft room, and um, I worked on the block of the month for April. Yay, I finally did it. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'll show it to you so you can see what it is. That's it. Just kidding. Those are the instructions. Oh, wow, Wendy. Are you in Australia? Hi, Constance. Hi, little DB Cross. What's your What's your name? In Mesa, Arizona. Is it warm down there? My father-in-law lives in um, Sun City. Oh, Ontario. Okay. Aw, thank you, Maria. I'm so glad I've been able to help you. That's wonderful. Well, I'm going to show you this block that I'm working on for the April block, for the block of the month. Nice. That sounds like a nice thing to do, Marsha. Kathy. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Um, yes, I worked on this, and I love it. This is actually one of my very favorite patterns. Have you noticed that I'm putting all of my favorite patterns into the sampler quilt? <laughs> I feel like I say that a lot. Hi, Frank. That's right. I forgot you did ask me to do that with the, um, with the sewing machine. Actually, I should probably do that. Hi, Beatrice. How are you? Um... Frank, I will have to do that on a separate video, but I promise you I will do it, okay? I will I will thread the sewing machine. Um, actually, I can just show you guys now. If you guys don't mind, I'll just show you how I thread my sewing machine. Would you, I mean, do you mind if I do that? Um, I'm going to have to turn the camera, though, real quick and then show you. So if you get dizzy, close your eyes for just one second. And I'm going to position you here. And then I'm going to show you. It's really cool, actually. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to push this down a little bit so my hand is going to be in the way. I do apologize, guys. But All righty. Let's see if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. All right. So this machine is a Janome 9450. The machine that I normally work with is a Janome 9400. They're very similar. The only difference is, is this one has like a tapering stitch and something else I don't remember. Um, mine is the, almost the same exact, it's built the same way, same exact model, fits in the same table, whatnot. All right, so I'm gonna pull this thread out of here. And I may actually, I'm going to push the little 
things done. Just bear with me here, guys. I know we're all over the place here for a sec. Hold on. Just bear with me. I'm trying to make it so that it'll be easy as possible for you guys to see. Don't mind my messy floor there. Ooh. I hope you guys can see my sewing machine. Ta-da. Come on, stay up. This dumb thing. All right. Okay. So... I've got my spool of thread, all right? Now, with the 9400 and the 9450, there is a little lock button here. It's got a little key. You wanna push that. That locks everything out. This machine has little discs that um, the thread has to go through, so you wanna be able to hear it kinda go through. So I'm gonna show you. Also, when you're loading thread into this machine, if you're going to be using a spool like this, you want your thread to be coming off of it like that. Not the other direction. Not over. You want it to come through under. So I'm going to go ahead and put this spool right here. You're not going to be able to see it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put the little tiny little spool thing on there. Let's see if I can get you up a little bit higher. Hold on. Just bear with me. You hear my dog barking now, can't you? Okay. I feel like I'm kind of all over the place here. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to take my thread, and I still have it locked out, okay? And I'm just going to take it, and there's like this little... Oh, good gravy. I don't know. Hold on a second. Maybe I can get Brandon down here to do this. Hold on. I'll be right back. Brandon. Brandon. Oh, boy. Okay, he's not in here, guys, so I can't. This is a light that comes with my machine. Isn't that cool? So you can see better? All right. Well, I'm gonna do the best that I can, okay? I'm gonna show you right here. So you see this little piece right here, this little metal piece? This has to feed through here. Then it comes through here, and then you go down. And then there's like a little metal hook in there you can hear a hook, okay? Can you see what I'm doing here? No, you cannot. All right, so I hooked here. Now I'm bringing it here, and then there's this little metal piece right there. And I need to just slide the thread right there. So now the thread is in there. And then there's one more down here by my needle bar, this little hook. So I'm gonna hook it in that, like that. And then there's like these little teeth. This is my needle threader. I don't know if I can do this without my arm being in the way. So there's a needle threader right here, okay? These little teeth. So what I wanna do is get my thread. It's gotta stay in this, this little bar here where the needle is. And then you're gonna take your thread in the teeth and then you're just gonna put it over this number seven and pull it all the way through and then cut the thread. And then thread the needle. And that's it. And then you press the unlock bo a button and it should be done. And I have no idea why my dog is acting like such a butthead. So, was that helpful? Were you able to see it, or do you need me to redo it? Because <laughs> I couldn't tell while I was doing it. Let me know. Because I can try and do it again if you need me to.
Ah, why is she barking? Rough, rough. She gets so mad sometimes. She's not even mad. She's just a goofball. So, well, I hope that was helpful. I can't see anybody's comments. That is a beautiful machine. Ah, thank you. Yeah, it really is. It sews very, very nice. I absolutely, I, I really do love this machine. It's really smooth and it's, it's really nice. And uh, so, yeah, what is wrong with my dog? Where's my husband is the bigger question. <laughs> he needs to take care of that problem. But, um, Ooh, maybe he wants to go get pizza. That would be wishful thinking, right? Ooh, that sounds good for dinner pizza. <sighs> I'm tired of eating at home. Who's tired of eating at home? Raise your hands. Yeah. Anyway, so that was pretty much it. I figured that we would have kind of a low-key sort of day today and just kind of chit-chat. So um, I would love to answer any questions that you have, which is why it was great that Frank asked for the threading of the sewing machine because I had forgotten to do that. But um, if you need me to demonstrate that again, just let me know, okay? I know this machine is a little bit tricky on that. It does. It has a very, very large throat. I do believe that this one has, is it 11 or, I don't remember if it's 11 inches or 13. I think it's 11, 11 and a half inches, the throat space here. It is, it's amazing. And I don't know if you know this, but they came out with the new one. Oh no, Constance, not that. See, my 9400, I haven't had any issues with it at all. I took it in to get it serviced and... Um, my bobbin winder stopped working. It just, it wouldn't wind a bobbin, so they had to order a motor, a new motor for it. And then all this crap happened, so I didn't get my sewing machine back. So this is actually a loaner, um, which was very nice of them to loan to me <laughs> because I don't know what I would do if I didn't have a sewing machine right now. I mean, I have plenty of other sewing machines, but um, I like this one because I can sit it in the table and just sew. But... Uh, the other, um, I was going to say, I I got to actually sew on that M7, the Janome M7. Oh, my goodness, what a dream is that. Hi, Nat. Welcome. It was um, it was so nice. And that one has the 13 inch, 13 inches of throat space. That was pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. I tried to get my husband to get me that machine, but he said no. <laughs> I love Janome's too, Nat. I love them. And um, so, yeah, he told me no because we're still paying my other one off. So <laughs> I won't get that machine for a long time unless they unless they decide that they want to discount it really, really heavily. <laughs> and, and by discount it heavily, I mean pretty much give it to me for free. <laughs> so we know that will never happen, right? But, um, yeah, that is a fantastic... Oh, I love that machine. It's it's truly a dream. But uh, I also, when we were at the store, because I was there, I thought, well, yes, they're, they are really, really nice machines. This is my first Janome. I've never had, so I never had a Janome before this. I never had a Bernina or anything like that. I've always had Singer's. And so, um, and the little singer machine that I have is great and it's, this stitches beautifully and it does, I mean, it's got, you know, the little cutter machine and whatnot. I find that the Janome machines are a little bit, um, I think they're built a little more for a lot of heavy duty quilting and a lot of sewing. So, um, I love my singer machine though, and I still do use it. I use it to piece. Because uh, I just love the way that it sews and stitches. But anyway, um, 
yeah, I hadn't had one. So that was my first one that I got and that I got for Christmas. And I'm kind of hooked now. Kind of a Janome girl, I think, forever. I did so with a Bernina. And that machine was wonderful. Um, you know what? I have actually, Beatrice, actually the ones who loaned this to me, I've actually kind of talked to them a little bit about it. We're, we're kind of in the talks of it. Yeah, we are. I am lucky, Nat, that I, that we do have, that I do have a store close by. I actually have two stores. One of them is where I got my AccuQuilt and the other one is where I got my sewing machine. Um, the one where I got my AccuQuilt is by my house and the one where I got my sewing machine is probably about mm, 10 miles away. Not too far, but, um... Both are really great. Um, the one that's closer to my house, they carry the baby locks. And uh, I like baby locks, but I feel like, yep, the baby lock dealers. They're nice machines. I really do like them, but I think I'm more privy to the Janome brand. I don't know why. It's just a preference. I think you, you I think as a sewer and a quilter and things and such, I think you kind of have a you get kind of a feel for what you like, what's going to work best for you. And I just find that I really like these machines. I just, they work for me. I find them to be easy to operate. Um, they don't have, I, I don't feel like I have to read a manual, a huge manual to, to operate the machine. I feel like I can sit down and I can just go. And that's the kind of person that I am. <laughs> I like to be able to just... Hit the ground running. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway. Um, but that's not to say that the other brands aren't terrific. Because they are. You know, I I have sewn on a few of them. Tested them out. I actually tested quite a few out before I got this one. And, um, yeah. I just, I fell in love with this one. And, of course, my husband cried when I told him that I wanted that sewing machine. <laughs> Love giving him culture shock but uh hey he's a golfer so he should totally get it right um yeah he loves to play golf he's a very good golfer my husband he uh he went on a junior golf tour when we were right after we graduated from high school and um he went to new zealand australia and fiji Oh, you have, oh, do you have the 500E, Wendy? Um, and so, yeah, he, uh, he's done a lot of stuff and, uh, he's, he's quite good. So, yeah, Constance, I agree. I do. I feel like they're a workhorse too. Yep. Like they just keep on going. <laughs> you can beat the heck out of them and they're going to keep going. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when I think about it, you're right. Because when I think about how much I actually do sew, especially, I mean, I've always sewn kind of, I sewed a lot. Yeah. Oh, for the, you are saving for the 500E. Awesome. Um, that's a cool machine. I wanted that machine. Um, I just, you know, I do a lot of sewing, especially now that I have the YouTube channel. I do more sewing now than I've ever done before. So, um it was pretty much warranted. Uh, the 500 here, um, at least where I get my machine was, I think they had it on sale for $19.99. I want to say that's what I was looking at when I was looking at that embroidery machine. Oh, you actually had the factory there, Kara. How cool is that? <laughs> I would have been there all the time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Wendy, they are. I would imagine. I think Canada is a lot more expensive than here. Yeah. Yeah, it's an expensive, uh, it's an expensive embroidery machine, but it is really nice. I saw it at the quilt show. Thank you, Kara. Um, yeah, I saw it at the quilt show in action and I was convinced that I should have it. And again, my called my husband and he was like, you're not getting it. Um, 
they have. See, now I haven't used one of those. Okay, so I'll tell you my story. I had one. I bought a brother um, from Walmart. This was years ago, you guys. This was years ago. This was not recently. Um, oh, God, how long ago was it? 15 years ago? I bought a, a, a brother sewing machine. And um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. But it moved a lot when I was, like, trying to sew on it. Like, it wasn't real heavy duty. It just kind of slid around. And so I ended up taking it back, and that's how I ended up with the with the Singer. So I had the Singer, before I had this one, I had the Singer Confidence Quilter, which was a great machine. I actually used it as a trade-in on this one. They gave me $1,000 on the trade-in for it. Um... And then um, I had, I still had this one, the 9960, the Singer Quantum Stylus 9960, which is a terrific machine. And I still have it and I use it. And that's the one I made all my Harry Potter quilts on. And uh, so, hi, Nancy. So, yeah. I mean, I just think it just depends, you know, on each person and what you want and what works for you and, you know. What kind of bells and whistles are you looking for? For me, the biggest thing, honestly, when I was looking for a sewing machine was I wanted the needle threader and the needle cutter. That's all I cared about when I first started looking. Well, now I'm really spoiled because this machine has this foot that goes up down. So now when I'm sewing, I just hit the foot pedal and this will just start sewing. And when I stop it automatically, the foot pops up for me. I don't have to lift the presser foot. I'm so spoiled. That has been such a crazy little feature that I have like really fallen in love with. This machine also down at the bottom, it has a foot pedal. The foot pedal is like this big. It's that wide. And um, yes, there the cutter is a must. This one has a cutter that you can cut with your foot. So it's attached to the big, the big pedal down here. So I can actually cut the threads with my feet. I have a really hard time with that. I'm not used to it. I always end up still using this. Right, exactly, Jackie. Yep, it's just, yep, I know. I, I know. Well, I'm blind, so I really need the needle threader. It's really, if I didn't have it, I don't think I could sew because I could be sitting there trying to stick the thread in there for a month. <laughs> but, um, and then I have the, I think I've shown, I know I've shown you because I was sewing on it for a while. I have the memory, the Janome Memory Craft 11,000 um, sewing machine that I bought feet for. And um, I love that machine too. It, that is a workhorse. <laughs> hey, the needle threader is important, right? It doesn't matter what the brand is. We got to have the needle threader and the thread cutter. Um, but yes, I have the Memory Craft 11,000. I use that as my embroidery machine, but now I'm starting to use it more for sewing um, just because I'm a freak and I just love to sew on different sewing machines now, I guess. I don't know. Oh, no, Nat. Yeah, see, that's what I'm afraid of with that one. It's um, because it is so old. It's like hard to find parts now, and it's like discontinued. So I'm just praying that it like stays, you know, stays going. Um, yep, that's Jackie. That was what I found, too, when I had that one, is that I would be sewing, and it was just so lightweight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I waited my whole life for this machine I'm telling you I love it so much it's it's kind of crazy it's I'm really spoiled I know how truly blessed I am to have it I really do and I've worked very hard for it but um yeah I do I take really good care of it just because I mean, my husband bought it for me for Christmas, and it was very special. And it's a this is a very expensive sewing machine, you know. And so I'm grateful for that. And so I want to take really good care of it so that I can have it for, 
years and years and years to come. You know, I mean, unless somebody wants to, like, give me a new sewing machine every year, that'd be great, but <laughs> doubt that'll happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'll be awesome, Jackie. I just finished making a whole bunch of those for family over the weekend. Holy Moses, was that a crap ton of work or what? You know, I'll be honest with you, once I started looking, because I was making them with the elastic, I made myself one with the elastic, the mask, that's what we're talking about, masks, and um, I liked it, but when I went to cut the elastic, I found that it it really kind of, when I would, when I tugged on it, it kind of started to unravel a little bit. Yeah, they're so quiet, aren't they, Wendy? Um and smooth. Um, I just found that it would unravel. So I agree, Natalie. Embroidery seems really hard. I've done it. I like it. Um, I think it's amazing. I love the outcome of it. I will tell you though, um, I, what I don't have the patience for is to change the threads out all the time. For some reason, changing all the threads out, it drives me insane. I'm like, I just want to just hook it up and let it go. <laughs> Kara, no, this is just a, this is a quilting machine. So it does piecing and then you can actually quilt on it. You can do ruler work on this, this machine as well. Yes, Jackie, I need a multi-needle and I need it to be 20 needles. <laughs> and we looked at one of those. <laughs> My husband was like, no. <laughs> I tried to convince him that I needed one. He told me no. But he knew, he understood what I was talking about because, he, okay, so my father in law used to own a silk screening shop. And then my husband went into business with him for a little bit. And so um, they would send out for embroidery and things like that. Yes, $30,000. Exactly right. And he laughed at me. <laughs> so he knew exactly. He knew exactly what the game was, all right? So I couldn't pull one over on him on that one. I can on the quilting stuff, but not on the embroidery side. Nope, that doesn't work with him. But um, I think I was talking about masks. I found that using ribbon, because I have a ton of it, was actually better than using the, uh, the elastic. And you can also use bias tape. I just want you to know that. If, I didn't do a video on that. But um, you can use bias tape. You can make your own bias tape. If you have a bias tape maker, even better. Um, so, yeah. I just, I think that's the, the way to go, to be honest. That way you can wash it. And you don't have to worry about anything getting all gummed up or ate anything yucky in there. So, right. Okay, so I found these really cool embroidery things at the sewing store and at Christmas time. So you can make like the pictures and the, right, that's where I'm at, Jackie. Um, and they had the really beautiful, um, like the Santa Claus and then they had the nativity scene. And yep, you can use gross, gross grain ribbon. I did, I used some of it. Um, but they had uh, the nativity scene in, in a kit. And I was like, oh, I'm going to totally do that. Uh, yeah, no. And then when I really started looking at it, I was like, that is going to take me like an entire year to make that thing with an embroidery machine. So I didn't buy it. I just didn't buy it. I stitched out a baby onesie for my friends, for my daughter's best friend. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, I had a friend who, or my daughter's best friend, had a little girl um, a couple months ago, right before my daughter had my grandson. And um, it was so funny because I stitched out this little bunny on her, on a onesie for her and made her a little tutu. It was so doggone cute. It was, so, it was miniature size, newborn size. And... I had to redo the onesie like two times. <laughs> the first time I sewed it together in the embroidery hoop. Oh, and then I, because I just couldn't figure out how to flip it inside out. And I'm watching all these YouTube videos. And I was, you know, you guys would have laughed if you had heard me. You, you would have laughed. 
and I ended up cutting it off with scissors and throwing it in the trash. I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is not easy. It's hard. <laughs> that is such a smart idea. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, Jackie, you just saved me a whole bunch of grief. <laughs> Now I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and then you just sew it up when you're done, right? Oh, why didn't I think of that? Doggone it. But yeah, so then I ended up buying water-soluble um, stabilizer because I hear with baby onesies, you want water-soluble stabilizer on there. Oh, a serger. I don't have one. Does anybody recommend a good serger? Because I really don't have one. <laughs> You've thrown them away too. <laughs> They're hard. It's hard to do embroidery on those things. I'm telling you right now. So, yeah. And then I learned the hard way I needed water-soluble um, stabilizer because onesie fabric is way different than... It's just a nightmare. It stretches. So, if you're going to embroider on a onesie, you need water-soluble stabilizer and regular stabilizer. Yes. And it is very hard to do. Very hard. I agree. I agree. I prefer my heat press for that. I just like to just cut the little design out with my Cricut. Put it on there and it's done. It's all done. Works out great. But um, I got to tell you, I have so much stuff that I need to do. I've got, I still want to show you guys how I make these little tutus. Oh, I bet you're right, Beatrice. I bet you that would be great. Cut away, tear away, similar sidewall for a topper. Yep, that's what I do use. Uh-huh. I got all of that stuff. I make um, little baby tutus and toddler tutus, and they're adorable. And I have every color of tool you can imagine, for real. And every color of ribbon that you can imagine. And, uh... He, and I just, I sew these little ribbon tutus. So I put ribbon all the way around the, the bottom. And, oh, really? For 10 years? Wow. You're really good at that. Or just buy them. <laughs> yeah. So, but the tutus I find are really fun. Um, the only thing I hate about the tutus, to be perfectly honest, is cutting them. Because you have to have so many, you have to have so much yardage to create all the different little layers. But once they're done, oh my Lord, they're so cute. They're so super cute. So someday I'll get to it. I just, I have so many projects that I wanna do and I feel like I have so little time. You would think with the uh, being in the lockdown that I would just have all this time to do all this stuff, right? And I still don't have all the time. I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. Does anybody have any questions? Do you guys have any quilting questions? Oh, I know what I was going to do. I was going to show you that doggone thing, the quilt block of the month that I'm going to be doing a video on. Shush. Guess I better get with the program here. It's because I uh, turned the camera around. Yeah, it's, hi, Diane. Um, yeah, it is, it's hard to get things done. You know, I really did. You're going to love the next project. Um, I'm still working on the sawtooth star block. So if you guys are still, if you guys are doing the sew along with me, we're still doing the sawtooth quilt. But um, this is for the quilt block of the month. This is for April. And I will be doing a video on this and I will be posting it up, okay? But I had to play with it today to get measurements and stuff right, but this is a bear paw. This is a bear paw block. Now, you might be asking yourself, why does that not look like a bear paw? <laughs> Thank you, but it is. Each one of these little quadrants are the bear paws. They, it is amazing. And if you wanted to get really crazy with this, you could actually make like a one inch strip that would go down the middle with a square in the center 
and another one going down. Hi, Deborah. But I just, uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, kind of make it a little bit, I don't want to make it too complicated, but I want you guys to get the feel of making some really cool stuff for your sampler quilt. Cause I think it's going to be amazeballs. And uh, like I said, I think I'm putting in all things that I love. Now, I will tell you, you see all these little points here. <laughs> Mine aren't perfect, as you can see. <laughs> so you can tell what the real trick is, right? The trick is getting it to, to um, line up perfectly. I'm not sure if I'm going to have you do it. There's two different ways to go about doing this particular block. And um, I haven't decided yet. Yes. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to have us just do it like with, remember how we made the regular um, blocks out of the square, the half square triangles by drawing a line down the middle and going that route? There's another way that you can do them. You can actually sew around an entire square and then you cut it in diagonal pieces and then you get four half square triangles. I don't like that method 100% and I will tell you why. And it's because I feel like they don't come out exactly right. Even though you trim them, I still don't feel like they come out exactly right. There's something about the old fashioned way of, yes, thangles. <laughs> To me, there's something, this is just a personal preference for me. There's something about the way that you cut it and the way that you sew it together and piece it. And I really find that the old fashioned way in quilting, even though we have all these cool little shortcuts and things, is still sometimes the best way to do it. It's, it makes your quilt turn out better. I hate to tell you that, but that's what I have found over the years in quilting. And trust me, I love to take every shortcut that I possibly can because I don't have the patience to sit there and cut every little triangle. But sometimes, sometimes you need to. So I haven't decided which way I'm going to show you yet. <laughs> so I don't know. I might show you the easier way. It's just, um, it's just another method of doing things. And, you know, you have to find what works right for you. So... What works for me may not work for you, and what works for you, it may not work for me. But I do, uh, I did love that, that one. It turned out so pretty. I think I showed you the quilt that I've made, yeah, the easy way. I think I've shown you the quilt that I made for my friend. It was a king size quilt, and it was a bear paw pattern. That was the one that's on my blog. It's also on my Instagram. <laughs> And I, she had asked me if I would do it for her. And I told her, yes, I think you guys remember this. I actually did an entire blog post on this on my blog. If you would, are interested in reading it, you really should go read it. Um, because I kind of go into depth in like why I shouldn't have accepted that. But the things that I kind of learned along the way in doing it. Um, I'm learning now to say no to things that I can't really deliver on corner clipper I don't know probably not yep looks like one big gigantic star like this but if I had a different color in here and these were these colors it would really it would really pop it is pretty, isn't it? It's a creative grids ruler. Oh, really? Huh. I did not know. Well, you can see all the seams. <laughs> I pressed each and every one of them open. <laughs> wow. Well, now I know my AccuQuilt makes a bear paw as well. I have it actually. Um, I haven't opened it and used it yet. I probably should, but I didn't. Um, I just wanted to do that because I know not everybody has an Accu quilt. Creative Grids folded corner clipper. Size of 
Mars bottle. Wow. I didn't know they had that. Um, no, this is actually four. These are four blocks put together and each block is six and a half inches by six and a half inches. So this block finishes at 12. But yeah, they're little blocks that you sew together. So they're little six inch blocks. Normally a bear paw quilt is, I believe it's seven by seven or so it turns out 14, but um, which might be why the points look a little different too, because the math is not, I wanted this to be a 12 inch block and not a 14 inch block. So there's, there's that. So normally the points are really pointy but not in this case, but I'm not worried about it. So we're gonna need it to fit into our quilt. So, oh my goodness. It's a Monday, isn't it guys? It's a definite Monday. I'm certainly pooped out. The weekend was interesting. What did I do this weekend? Oh, I cleaned. <laughs> How could I forget? <laughs> I cleaned. I actually deep cleaned. And um, that's never fun. But yeah, I find that I, I know. <laughs> it is boring. Ugh. But um, yeah, so I did. I deep cleaned. And I didn't really do much. And then I played around on my tablet. I play Yahtzee on there. It kind of does feel that way, doesn't it, Wendy? I do feel better, Diane. Thank you. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, I don't know what was going on those two days. I had a horrible, horrible migraine. I don't know. It was weird. Different sizes. Beatrice on which one? I know they are. Oh, are you talking about for the, you're talking about for the sampler? I know. I know they're different. It's it's on purpose. I did it on purpose. You'll find out why. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I did it on purpose. And I, I thought about it afterwards. And I was like, I really probably shouldn't have done that. But I did. Um, the reason I did it, I'll tell you why. The reason I did that was because sometimes when you're making a quilt, um you either trim too much off or you have a block that is smaller than the others just for whatever reason. Seam allowance, you sewed, you didn't sew a quarter inch or you, just anything can throw a block off. You pressed it, you stretched it, whatnot. So the reason why I did that was because we're gonna do some things to, I'm gonna show you how to make those blocks, how to fix those and make them fit into the quilt even though they don't, they're not the same size. Does that make sense? So I'm going to teach you how to fudge it. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do. I'm going to teach you how to make it work. <laughs> because it has happened to me so much, so many times. You look at it wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, and then you don't have to sit there and spend all your time beating yourself up because you didn't do it right or whatnot, you just, you're just like, oh, whatever, okay, we're gonna add to this, so here we go. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Oh, I've done it so many times, it's unbelievable. I think probably in almost just about every quilt that I've ever made, and I can tell you when I made my Harry Potter quilt, I did that. I cut one of the blocks, actually, one of the rows, way too small, way too small. So I took care of that problem. I fudged it and <laughs> you can't even tell. <laughs> it looks like it just belongs. Yes, Deborah, you're welcome. That's exactly why. Yeah. Yep. It was planned on purpose. I know. I kind of wondered that. I was like, I wonder when they're going to catch on that one of these is smaller, <laughs> that they're all different kind of sizes and they're supposed to be 12 inches. Now there is another quilter on YouTube. I was watching um, a while back and she had done, 
she had made her blocks and she said, you never trim up your blocks until you're completely done. Because what she did, how she did all of hers, was she based it off of the smallest block in the whole, the whole patch. And then she would trim all of her blocks down to that size. And that is something that you definitely can do. You can, we could definitely trim them all down to make them fit in a smaller size. So you can either do that or you can add to them. It's just a preference. It just depends on what you think is going to look best. And to be perfectly honest, I don't even know what's going to look the best either until we lay this out and start looking at it. And then we can say, okay, well, it might make sense to trim it all down. Or it might make sense to just add a little bit of a border and make it a little bigger and just kind of continue on. So, yeah, it just depends. Yeah. So, yeah, and we're all taught different ways on how to do how to do it, you know. And then there are some quilters who will tell you, you need to just turn that into a scrap quilt and let it be. Not me. I'm like, yeah, you can still use it. <laughs> You can make it look awesome. It's going to look great. But, and since it's a sampler quilt, you know, it's going to, it's going to look amazing anyway. So it's going to have a different variation of all different blocks and whatnot. So it'll look cool. I don't want it to be a correct block. I'll teach you how. Yes, do not square up your blocks until the very, very end. Yes. We will be doing that at the very end. I think I actually have that in the instructions too. If you're following along on my blog post, you, I have that written in there that you don't want to trim. So wait until the very end because that's when we'll make a decision as a group on what we want to do once we start looking at stuff on the quilt wall. We always do it. Yep, exactly. So, um, yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing either way. So don't worry about it. You guys will love it. I know you will. I just know it. So are there any questions? Any other questions this evening, guys? Is anybody doing the Sawtooth Star? Are you guys doing the swing one? <laughs> Did my friend from high school come back? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeremy, uh, he is, so he lives in California. Awesome. He, a uh, makeup man. Yeah, he's so good with makeup. It's unbelievable. He's done makeup for really famous people. Um, but no, he's kind of a, he's kind of a an introvert. Believe it or not, he's very introverted. He only comes around once in a while. Um, but he did text me. He thought it was so funny. He wanted me to show you guys all the pictures from my modeling shoots, and I was like, No, that's not happening. No. <laughs> I'm like, No. Mm -mm. That was like 10, 15 years ago. That ain't happening. But. Um, yeah, so, I mean, they're clean. There's nothing wrong with them, but I'm just like, no. Nah. Uh, yeah, he's so silly. I miss him. I wish he still lived here. He's a lot of fun. He really, really is a lot of fun. And um, we have another mutual friend. Her name is Beth, and she lives in California. She's an artist. And so she does a lot of um, really beautiful paintings out there. And... Uh, our 30 year reunion was supposed to be this year, but I think I told you guys nobody planned it. And now with the COVID, I don't think we're gonna have any uh, high school reunions. Um, but our 20 year, we all kind of decided that, yes, once the masks are all done, um, we had decided for our 20 year, Beth and I, that we were not going to do, hi Candy, welcome. Um, we weren't gonna do the the whole you know the what is it the dinner thing and everything else with, with everybody else we had it at her house so we had probably about 20 of us that got together and we just had a barbecue and we had a couple beers 
and it was fantastic. We had the best time. Oh, that's awesome, Candy. Good. Yeah, so that's really all we did. You know, we just kind of hung out and talked, and we got to really hang out with the people that we hung out with in school. Yeah, exactly, Diane. Yeah. So I got to see a bunch of people that I used to hang out with, and it was a lot of fun, and, you know, it was good times. I think everybody that was on my cheerleading squad was there. <laughs> gosh it's so funny I used to be such an extrovert and now I'm not I'm such an introvert how did that happen when did that happen that's kind of kind of nutty but um yeah I don't know times and things change I guess people change I remember walking to school holy moly there's this hill so we used to live in this house and we used to, I had to walk to school because I didn't have a car and um Oh my God, the hill was like, it was like killer. You know, I look at that hill now and when I'm driving and I'm like, how did I ever walk up that hill to school? <laughs> it's amazing I'm still alive. <laughs> but boy, I'll tell you what, that was quite a workout. And I do remember that. And I remember like my sophomore year, I had to walk up to school. My friend and I, we walked to school and we had to get like our student ID and we had to pick up our schedule and all that stuff back in the day. No, kids don't care at all. <laughs> and I remember my kids, mom, can you take me? I have to go get all my stuff. My mom was like, you're walking. <laughs> you're 15, you can handle it. <laughs> oh my gosh, how the times have changed, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Oh my gosh. And I, yeah, even like when I was a little kid, I would come home from school. It'd be like seven. My grandma was a phone call away. So I knew if I got home from school, nobody worried about anybody picking anybody up and doing weird crap. So I would go home and I would make myself macaroni and cheese. I knew how to cook. I was seven. My mom taught me. I knew not to burn down the house, you know, and I'm just, I'm just amazed. I mean, that was, that was really young, but I'm just, you know, thinking back on it. When we were little kids, we knew how to do a lot of stuff, you know, we knew how to kind of care for ourselves a little bit. So I don't know. It's all changed. It's all changed. I don't know. For the better, for the worse, I'm not really sure. <laughs> Oh, it is so different now. I'm not sure. You know, I like I, my kids, I don't know. I probably coddled them too much. I probably did. But I taught them responsibility. They had to clean their rooms. They had to do, they had to do chores. And they learned how to cook. And they learned that sometimes, you know, your mom's tired or dad is tired. And you kind, you're kind of on your own for dinner sometimes. Like, there's food in the fridge. You can make yourself a sandwich. You're not going to die if you eat a sandwich for dinner one night. I, you're just not going to die from that, you know? Um, but it's, I mean, it's crazy. But I feel like all I did was cook. <laughs> That's probably why I hate to cook now. I cook so much. <laughs> oh, thank God my husband loves to cook. But um, anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm going down that road with the kids there. Huh. They're spoiled today. They're just really, really spoiled. Yes. That's awesome, Nancy. That's, see, and that's how it should be. They should know how to do all those things. They, they really should. My husband knew how to do that stuff too when he moved out. He knew how to cook and clean and do laundry. I mean, his idea of cleaning was with nothing but bleach, but he knew how to clean, and he he insists on doing the laundry. He still does laundry. My husband does laundry. He hates the way that I do laundry. Yes, life skills. They need to have them. Just because they're boys doesn't mean that they can't have them. I mean, we teach our daughters this stuff, right? We got to teach our sons, too. They got to know. They have to know. <laughs> So, 
Yeah, it's very important. You know what's really funny about that is I find that men actually enjoy cooking more than women do. And that I do believe that most men are probably better at it. I really, really do. My husband is a far better cook than I am. Now, when it comes to baking, me. I'm the queen. I am so sorry, Wendy. I am so sorry. <laughs> you can borrow mine if you want. <laughs> If you don't want what is planned. Yes, exactly. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. I just don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, he likes you to do it. Yeah, the gleaning. Well, at least he makes toast, right? I mean, you got to take the wins where you can get them. You just do. I mean, I fight with my husband over the laundry thing. Because some t it makes me feel terrible because, and I've told him this, I'm like, okay, so you do all the cooking and then you want, you insist on doing the laundry. So I clean, you know, that's my, I do the cleaning. That, that is my thing. I do the cleaning. Um, wow. Since his first heart attack. Huh? Well, that's good. But, um, my husband, he just, he, he doesn't like the way I do it. I guess when we were first married, I don't know, into year five or something, I, because their dad did nothing. Yeah, my husband's dad did nothing. Mm -mm, he wouldn't do nothing. Didn't help with the kids, didn't do nothing. Nope. That's my understanding. So, yeah, my husband is completely different, but. Yeah, about five years into our marriage, all of a sudden he hated the way I did laundry and he wanted to do it. And I was like, knock yourself out. Go for it. I guess I dyed his underwear pink. I don't know. <laughs> I missed a red sock or something. <laughs> That's one way to get him to do it, ladies. Just dye their stuff pink. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, he, uh, he didn't like that. <laughs> yeah it's a team it's teamwork right it should be it should be teamwork okay Beatrice we'll see you you have a good night I'll see you tomorrow too I look at it this way if I have to work too then everything should be shared now if I'm not working or whatnot and I don't have to share in paying those bills or whatever then okay I get it yeah if I'm not doing anything and I'm just being at home, every I should take care of the home. Ah, from the Marine Corps cooks, cool. Yeah, you know when you're when you're both working, you need to do that. When I stayed home with the kids, I I did everything. I cooked, I cleaned, you know, I did the laundry, I did all of that, and took the kids to school and back and did homework and all of that. And honestly. Honestly, that's more work than going to work. <laughs> that's like 24-7 work. <laughs> but I would never, ever trade that for a million years. I would never trade trade being at home with my kids. It was such a great time. But, yeah. That's right, Rowena. Yeah. So, you know. Let's see. Whoever's home is who cares for the home, really. That's how I look at it. I know my kids are the same, my daughter and her and my son-in-law. They they both take care of the kids and they both clean and, you know, they help each other. And they also both work. So, and I babysit on Sundays. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. And the other grandma babysits on Saturdays. The grandma and grandpa and we do it too i got to see them i don't know if i told you that i got to see them yesterday oh it was so awesome we went on a walk i think i've told you they live like two blocks away so we met up we were taking a walk we walked our dogs and um i was able to see them i was so excited yay it was fun Yes, that's right. Now, sometimes you are just mentally tired. But yeah, it was really, um, it really lifted my spirits to see them. 
Oh, that's so great, Jackie. Yes, that's right, Nancy. <laughs> but yeah, oh, it was so nice. It was just really nice. Just brought, brought a lot of happiness back. I was really missing them a lot. Oh, thank you, Nat. You're so sweet. Do you know that my baby tomorrow, oh gosh, I can't believe it. My baby, my oldest, is going to be 30. She's going to turn 30 tomorrow. Oh, boy. Yeah, she's a little bit bummed because it's her 30th. And, uh, oh, Wendy, I'm so glad you got to see him. Um, yeah, she's kind of bummed because, you know, she's locked down and it's her 30th. So she can't really go and do anything real fun. Um, originally I think they were going to go to the mountains and kind of hang out as a family and that kind of got nixed. Excuse me. Cause you can't go to the mountains right now and do anything. They are asking you to stay at home, but, uh, yeah, what do you do? Right? So she goes back to work on Sunday. That'll be her first day back after having the baby. She's a little nervous. I don't blame her. I'd be nervous too. Um, for those of you who don't know, she's a she's a dog nurse, a dog and a cat nurse. She works in emergency vet medicine. So she's going to help all the doggies and kitties. And uh, I don't think she's seen Tiger King yet. And when she does, she's not going to be happy. <laughs> Oh, that show is a train wreck. Carol Baskins. Everything's her fault. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you later, Jackie. She does not. She loves them so much. Oh, man, Wendy. That's such a bummer. Three birthdays. I think that's going to be ours, too. Because, um, well, my mom's was back in March. We were on lockdown for hers, so we couldn't do hers. Brandon's dad's was also that way. My uncle's is that way. My daughter's is that way. My nephew will have that, and so will I. Okay, Candy, you guys have a good evening. I should probably let you guys go. It's after 6 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah, it's about 6.02. I should probably let you guys go. I need to go do dinner, and um, you guys all need to go relax and enjoy your evenings. And I thank you so much for hanging out with me, <laughs> Diane. Bah. <laughs> Cracking me up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go figure out what's for dinner. Hopefully it's pizza because pizza sounds terrific to me. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. So take care of yourselves and we'll chat then. All right. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.